Hi, Aaron here. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use JIRA automation to create workflow-based approvals in JIRA Cloud so that you can capture compliant electronic approvals without the overhead of electronic signatures. Okay, let's look at an example. Suppose I have this user story implemented and ready for formal testing. You can see I have a verification plan written. I have my requirements and tests linked up. They're approved. So this is ready for formal testing. But before we can do that, we need to get some pre-approval on this verification plan. So in order to do that, I'm going to flag this as ready for testing. And I'm going to assign this to Sarah, my VNV engineer, and she's going to be able to pre-approve this verification plan for me. Okay, so now Sarah is logged in and she is pre-approving this record to ensure that it's ready for formal testing. So she'll check out the verification plan. She'll check out the requirements and tests, make sure that they're all linked up, that everything is pre-approved, ready to go. And once she's satisfied, she can apply her electronic approval. Now to do this, instead of applying a formal electronic signature, we can save that for the end of the process. But at this interim step, uh, instead of doing a signature, we can just capture the workflow transition. So Sarah will transition from in progress to ready for test. All right, what happened when Sarah did that workflow transition? Well, JIRA Automation captured her electronic approval. You can see JIRA Automation captured her ID, her name, and the timestamp of her approval. And this is all based on that transition. Now, you might be concerned whether this is an audit ready electronic approval, and it is. Let me show you how. First, that transition from in progress to ready to test, that was a restricted transition that only a VNV engineer can complete. Not any user can complete that transition. Number two, now that we are in ready to test, that verification plan, along with other fields, is locked against further editing. So we cannot edit what has been pre-approved. The same is true for the electronic approval itself. You can see that the name, ID, and timestamp are not editable. Also, if you look at the history of this item, everything we just saw was captured in the audit log. So we have the transition was captured, and as well as the updating of the electronic approval. And finally, when we go to print this record, we can see that the pre-approval information is part of the printed record. Okay, now that we've seen a demo, let's learn how to configure this. To do that, we're gonna to go to settings and then issues. First, let's look at the, our custom fields. We created two custom fields to support this feature. VNV pre-approver, VNV pre-approved. You can give them any names you want, of course. Pre-approver is used for the name and ID of the pre-approval, and pre-approved is where we store the timestamp. And what's important here is that both of these fields are of the type text field read only. This is how we can ensure that users are not able to edit these fields directly. Okay, now let's look at our workflow. We can see that in our transition from in progress to ready to test, we have a single condition. This condition restricts the transition to a specific project role, in this case, VNV engineers. This is how we're able to ensure that only the right users are able to execute this electronic approval. We also saw that the verification plan and other fields were locked in the ready to test status. We did that using the workflow status properties. You can see there's a few properties here to block moving, deleting, editing. That last property is the one that locked the fields for regular users. If you want to learn more about locking issues by workflow status, check out some of my other videos on that. Finally, let's look at the JIRA automation piece. To do that, we're going to go back into our project and then select Project Settings. And inside Project Settings, we'll select Automation. Okay, you can see here we have two rules to support this feature, two automation rules. One for setting that electronic approval and the other one for clearing it. Let's look at the rule for setting the pre-approval first. This rule has two pieces, a trigger and an action. The trigger is the status transition from in progress to ready to test. The action is to edit our two pre-approval fields, VNV pre-approved, which contains the timestamp, and VNV pre-approver, which contains the name and ID. To capture these values, you can see that we're using a feature called JIRA smart values. This JIRA smart value takes the current timestamp, that's what now means, 
and formats it as a long date time string. There's lots of different uh, time formats that you can use here. And these smart values capture information about the current user that's initiated the transition. So this is how we're able to capture their display name as well as their ID. In this case, I'm capturing email address as the ID, but you can also capture their Jira Cloud system ID instead. Now let's look at the rule for clearing the pre-approval information. This rule has two pieces also. It has the, the trigger and the action. The trigger in this case is any transition backward from ready to test. So if we have an issue that has been pre-approved and we move it back to in progress or to canceled, we want to clear out that electronic approval information. To do that, we're going to use the edit issue action. And instead of setting our approval using smart values, this time we're going to blank them out using the dashed lines. You might be asking why I don't just blank these fields. Why am I setting them to these dashed lines? And the answer is because of a long standing limitation in JIRA. If you recall, these fields are of the type text field read only. And JIRA does not allow you to set a read only field to a blank or null value. You have to set it to some text. And so you can either blank these fields using dashed lines like I'm doing, or you can use a non-breaking space, or you can use any sort of string that you want to use, but you have to use a string. You can't set it to null. I prefer using these dashed lines or hyphens because they're easier to troubleshoot the non-breaking spaces. And that's it. All we needed is our two custom fields, our workflow transitions, and our two automation rules, and we have a lightweight, audit-ready, electronic approval. Let's take a look at the finished product one last time. This is our user story that we pre-approved at the beginning of the video. And to demonstrate our two automation rules, if we move this backward, back to in progress, and refresh our screen, and after the screen refresh, we can see that the two pre-approval fields have been cleared with our dashed lines. And now if we execute our approval transition again, and remember this restricted transition that only VNV engineers can make, and refresh our screen once more. And we can see that our first automation rule ran and captured our pre-approval. That's all for now. Next time, we'll build on this feature to implement a review route for multiple approvers. See you then. Thanks for watching.